And of course I'm referring to Quincy, the passionate pathologist, who you can see every Tuesday night at 8.30 here on 7. And I recently spoke to the star of the show, the irrepressible Jack Klugman, and uh, I asked him if he'd picked up any very good stories for Quincy from people coming up and talking to him all the way around the world. People coming up to you and, and talking to you about the series? No, no, no. I, I used to watch in the morning in the States. They, they don't do it anymore, but about 5.30 on, they put public service programs on. That was the cheapest time I got for them. And they'd have marvelous talk shows. People would come in. I did one on rock, on punk rock, because I saw the mothers of punk, rock, punk rockers on a show complaining about how they had lost a son and what was that. And it was a marvelous idea. I saw one on ch uh, child alcoholics, which I had no idea existed. So wherever I could get it, I'd get it from newspapers. I'd go through the newspapers and read stories. You know, but you'd stories. bring it back and you'd pass it on to them. Oh, yes. Then we'd sit down and we'd discuss it. And then they would do the, res then they would do the rest of the research on it. But my brother, I had a brother, Maurice, who worked for me, who was magnificent at it. He, he came to me with a picture of, there were about five kids with assorted diseases and ailments, and they were on horses, and they were kind of all looking happy. And there was equestrian therapy that really helped with the paraplegics and whatever. And uh, he said, there's a story. I said, what story? He said, if five kids who have those sorts of ailments can be that happy because they're on a horse, there has to be a story there. And of course he was right. We did a show on equestrian therapy helping these kids who, whose concentration span would maybe only be 20 seconds long, but if they had to stay on a horse and it went, it forced their concentration to be longer. A horse. Even in wheelchairs, they would wheel the kid up to the horse and then they would build platforms and they would wheel themselves up or be wheeled up and they would clean the horse. And the fact that taking the attention away from themselves and onto a living animal that returned their love. It was very, very good. And that's where we got stories. One of the, uh, the things that has been, I think, incorrectly uh, written about is the connection between you, or the character you play, Quincy, and uh, Dr. Noguchi, who's now a, almost notorious uh, oh, yes. coroner over there. Is it true? Is it based on no, that No, absolutely not. No. It, the character was based on medical examiners and coroner. There's a great deal of power in the coroner's office. For instance, if the coroner says, that's a murder, the commissioner of police has to investigate it as a murder, even if he thinks it's suicide. The coroner says that's homicide, it must be investigated. They're very, very powerful. Now, if in case of a police brutality act, right, a, a cop is accused of killing somebody. Well, unless the coroner is very strong, and Noguchi was very strong, they, they can't cover it up because of him. But if they had somebody they can handle, they then could get th cases just glossed over because they, they controlled him. But Noguchi was an independent man. He wasn't a tactful man. In the cases with the celebrities that died, unfortunately, he was not tactful. But I don't count that as points of God. It's bad taste. And, but he was a good man. He's a good and a good pathologist. And I wish he'd stayed in office. I backed him. And I, would, and I contributed to his front when he tried to win his job back. And in fact, I mean, you really helped to make him a star in a way. I mean, the series did. Well, I, I, the series did. I didn't, but I think the series helped to make all of the forensic pathologists, all medical examiners, stars. There was a case in court where they had a, a medical examiner on the stand and the lawyer was questioning him to show the audience what he did for a living and the judge said, wait a minute. And he leaned to the jury and he said, he does what Quincy does. And they said, ah, and they understood. <laughs> so, and we've helped to get them larger appropriations because the public began to learn what their job was and they are wonderful, wonderful men and they're good doctors. And See, to me, I always looked at Forensic medicine is instant research. So if there's a, an epidemic and somebody dies of that epidemic, you cut them open, you see what it is, and you're able then to stop an epidemic. Just as if sometimes you can find, most of the times, that body, if you know where to look, will tell you who killed them, and what killed them, and who killed them. And you could find that murder as a result of that body. You're going to stop maybe somebody else from getting killed. So it's really a, it's a, they call where death delights. Uh, Helpburn, who was a medical examiner in New York, always had that above his head. It was where the dead person was able to tell you more than a living witness about what happened to him and who did it.